Hello, happy Monday. This is Mrs. Nesteden. Today we are starting to talk about chapter 41, which is species interactions. Hopefully a lot of this today will be review, but these are ideas we'll be talking about more over the next few days. Within an ecosystem, species can interact in a lot of different ways. Uh, many of the first interactions people think of are feeding interactions, like are shown in the picture right here, um, the kind of the food web of the ecosystem. But when we talk about species interactions, it goes beyond just who eats whom in the ecosystem. There are many different types of interspecific interactions. Inter means between one species and another species. We classify these interactions by their effect on both of the species involved. So if an interaction benefits both, we call that a plus plus interaction. It's good for one and it's good for the other species. That's called a mutualistic or a mutualism type of interaction. Some interactions are negative for both. That's called competition. And you can kind of think, that, think of that as like, um, if deer and rabbits are both eating the same grass, neither one of them is going to get as much if they have to compete for that grass. So that's why it's a negative interaction for both. The third category is plus minus relationships. The most obvious one of these is predation. A predator prey interaction is obviously good for the predator and bad for the prey. Um, Herbivory is also a type of predation, if you think about it. Um, deer eating grass is good for the deer and bad for the grass, so that's also a plus minus. Um, and parasitism, things like a, a tick or a leech, um, is harmful to the host, to you, if you get bitten by a tick, that's bad for you, um, but good for the parasite because that's their source of nourishment. And the last group of interactions are what we call plus zero interactions. You may have heard of commensalism before. Um, this is something like uh, those fish that swim after sharks and just eat the scraps that fall off behind them. Um, it's good for those fish because they get some food, but the sharks really don't care if somebody's cleaning up their scraps or not. Facilitation is one you might be less familiar with. Um, Facilitation is similar. It's a plus zero. So one benefits and the other one isn't affected at all. Um, but facilitation tends to change an entire ecosystem in a way that benefits other species down the line. Um, so you can think of things like, like lichen growing on a rock actually starts kind of breaking down that rock and creating little pockets of soil. Um, that then allow other types of plants to land in that soil, their seeds to land in that soil and start growing. Um, and so it benefits the other plants that come later. It doesn't really affect the lichen one way or the other. So those are kind of the four main categories of interactions that we'll be talking about um, kind of throughout this week. A lot of these relationships can either be classified as obligatory or facultative. And this is kind of an example of what those words mean. Hopefully obligatory is a word that you are familiar with. If you're obligated to do something, you have to. So what we have right here, these pictures, this is an example of an obligatory mutualistic relationship. Um, these are leaf cutter ants, if you are familiar with them. Um, they cut apart leaves in little tiny pieces. Um, and then they carry them back to their nest and they use those leaves to help grow a fungus. They're actually farmers um, and they protect their little patch of fungus and then they feed off of the fungus and the, the substances it produces. So the leafcutter ants need this fungus as their food source and the fungus needs the kind of farming and protection of these ants. And so both of them can only survive with the other species. A facultative mutualism would be something like a bird eating a berry and then dropping a seed somewhere else. It's beneficial to both. The bird's getting food, the plant is getting its seed distributed, um, but there's no particular reason that it has to rely on that one species. It doesn't have to be that kind of bird. Lots of birds usually eat those seeds and distribute them. So it is a mutualistic relationship, um, but it's not absolutely necessary for those two specific species to interact with each other in order to get those benefits. 
So after that brief introduction, we are going to do a couple of lab activities this week to start looking um, at species interactions within a living community. And one of the communities we're gonna use as an example is pond water. And so if you are at home today, you are going to be going to look at kind of a virtual um, pond water lab just for a little while to kind of familiarize yourself with some of the different species that live in pond water. Students who are in class will actually be looking through a microscope at some pond water and identifying the species they find. So it's important that you're a little familiar with these species because you will be using their data um, in some activities that we do later this week. So. They will share their data with you over the next couple of days and we'll be working with that as we continue to study communities and ecosystems and species interactions and the importance of biodiversity. So have some fun looking around at some virtual pond water and some videos of pond creatures and have a great afternoon.